Welcome back to the Tana Told Podcast. I'm here for a very special bonus episode. I was able to be surrounded by some of the best coaches in the world here at this conference, and I pulled aside six humans. I got to interview, ask a few questions, and I'm so excited to share with you. So enjoy. We're out here with my good friend, Gabriel Zapata. So I actually know Gabe, he trains at the same gym as me in Southern California, but we're out here in Orlando at the same conference. So I thought it'd be a good time to pull him aside and ask him five awesome questions. So uh, the first three questions are gonna be fitness and health questions. And then I have two more that are more life advice wise or life, uh, life kind of questions. So my first question for you, man, is what is the biggest misconception about fitness or nutrition? that you like to debunk or that is commonly like misconstrued? Definitely the biggest misconception that I've gotten from the health industry is that you got to starve yourself to basically get a six pack or to be fit, to be, to lose weight. And for the longest time, since I was little, I always thought like you had to go to bed hungry and uh, just basically just feel like crap going to bed. And that's why, that's how you'll get fit. And a lot of people around me were doing that. So it wasn't until like maybe I was like uh, 21, 22 when I figured out, oh, you actually had to just eat a little bit more, but just the right food, you know, eat more protein, eat your vegetables and just just eat like whole foods, regular food. 100 percent. I like that. that was a really good answer, man. Yeah. So my qu- my next question is like, what's been the biggest challenge that you've personally faced like on your own health and fitness journey? And how did you overcome that? Mm, well, honestly, the biggest challenge that I face is being too hard on myself, which I still face to this day. I'm Relatable. not, not going to say like I overcame it completely, but I've been more content with myself, with my own fitness, such as like, I'd be like, oh man, I gained a little bit of fat over the weekend. Like right now on this trip, I've gained a little bit of weight and you I'm said on, that yesterday. yeah, and I'm on, yeah, I brought it up to him and yeah. I'm just like getting a little into my head, like too much in my head, but Um, honestly, like I know overall, like I'm in great health, I'm in great shape. And I just, and I also tell my clients that too, because my clients are the same way. They're just all like, Oh my gosh, I went on this trip and I gained so much weight. And I'm like, no, you look fantastic. Enjoy yourself. You got to enjoy life. Um, the only problem is, is when you overindulge and keep doing it and just never, uh, focus on your health. hundred percent, man. I love that. And, uh, my last fitness and health question. Uh, what's the number one piece of advice you'd give to someone just starting their weight loss journey? Seek help. Definitely seek um, professional help like a personal trainer like Tyler and I. If you if you have been in a struggle for a long time and you still haven't figured it out, like it's pro- it's your best time to look for help. Because I mean, I made a I, I said a quote in uh, Russell Brunson's from Russell Brunson's book, uh, Expert Secrets. Basically, he talked about like in every start of a story, any any start of like any big story, you're the main character. And in order for you to change your identity to be who you want to be, you have to look for a teacher just like uh, Yoda was to Luke Skywalker. Pumba and Timba, uh, Pumba and uh, Timon was to yeah. like Simba. And like, you know what I mean? I and they like all they all went through that transformation getting taught by their their teachers, their coaches. So if you're struggling with weight loss and you're just starting and you want to change, seek that professional help now rather than later because once you figure it out later on, you're going to be like, I wish I did this sooner. I love that, dude. That was that was a very well put. And uh, I think it kind of resonates with like some of the stuff we've heard over the weekend here is really like, to get to where you want to be, find someone that's already been there, someone that's already gone through that same experience that you're looking to uh, achieve. Or if you find the person that already has the thing that you want and connect with them. So I love that, man. And so lastly, I have two more questions. These are more life related. So um, what's the best life advice you've ever received? That That's like, that's a really good question because there's so many good life advices out there. But if I were to just say from the top of my head, the one that's impacted me the most, it was from last year, um, Eli Wild, who is uh, Tony Robbins' right-hand man, his right-hand man salesman, like best salesman, one of the best salesmen in the world. He came to this conference and coaching con last year, and he was talking about how you should align with your own moral values. And so... And like, it doesn't, we're not talking about like religious beliefs or anything like that. It's just who you are in the core. And if you pretend to be someone else, you're never going to align with your own moral values. And so you're not going to be the best version of yourself. Thus, your performance and everything in life is not going to be at its best. And so that resonated with me so much because 
I knew there was a lot of things in me that I wasn't aligning with my own moral values. Yeah. And so ever since then, I've been very cognitive or like just uh, more self-conscious about like my own actions and how I'm living my own life. And so I'm not perfect, but because I'm more aware of that, like I make the the big effort to make that constant change in pursuit of what I really believe in. That's phenomenal, man. Thank you for sharing that. And so last, my last question is like, what fuels or continues to drive you forward? There's a multi, there's a couple answers to this and I'm sure I'm going to leave something out by accident, but from the top of my head, number one is God. God is number one in my life. And so that's a big driving factor. It's uh, very important to me to have a relationship with God. And uh, number two is my family, my parents because um, they've raised me. I've been very fortunate to live with them and been very fortunate to have great parents. Pe um, my mom and dad have taught me and raised me well, and um, I don't want to let them down, and I don't want to let myself down with all that way they've raised me to give all that giving and let it to go to waste. So um, I'm very grateful, and, uh, and uh, I, I couldn't do it without them. You're an absolute killer, brother. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this with me. Yeah, no, thank you, Tyler. No. Absolutely. Shout out to TNT. Uh, mm. Great personal training. I, I told Tyler uh, yesterday that we were, we were having a conversation. And, um, I have great respect for him because I know he stands out in the gym. And I've told him that I have always had like a like a competitive. Uh, I've always been very competitive towards this guy because I knew like this guy stood out in the gym. It was cool to be very transparent with Tyler to talk to him how like how I really feel about him and and I have so much respect for him. So if you're uh, being coached by Tyler, I'd say that you're in good hands, very good hands. Bro, that means the world to me. Yeah. All course. right, I'm out here with my friend Paula. Thank you so much for taking the yeah, time. Yeah, thank to, you for uh, asking me too. Absolutely. So um, I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna ask you five questions. Okay. The first three questions will be fitness and health related. So okay. my question is uh, number one, what is the biggest misconception about fitness or nutrition that you would like to either debunk or that you think a lot of people like do wrong when they start? I would say that uh, the biggest misconception among clients, people trying to lose weight is that it's a lot more, it takes a lot more of an extreme approach, mm -hmm. an aggressive approach 100%. to get incredible results. Yeah. It's actually a lot easier than people realize Ooh, from an execution standpoint. Yes. Most of the time, like less is more. Yes. I, I love Absolutely. that. Dial back the intensity get better recovery, get better sleep. hundred yeah. percent. Okay. Great answer. Um, so that being said, like what's been the biggest challenge that you've faced on your own health and fitness journey and how did you overcome that? So I would say that, so in my pursuit of my results mm -hmm. is your question. Yeah. The biggest challenge I think that I overcame was a poor relationship with food, mm -hmm. which interest, interestingly, I didn't develop until I got into fitness yep. when I was like 20. That was about 15 years ago. Um, so heavy yo-yo dieter, learned all about strength training and lifting before nutrition. And I assumed that you had to eat only the healthiest foods, yep. only the leanest foods to get results and then developed a poor relationship. So I think the thing that changed it truthfully was tracking macros and focusing on calories and protein and being more relaxed in my approach to food selection. And when wow. I realized, okay, I can get results while still eating suboptimal foods yep. at times, completely changed my life. It like set me free. That is amazing. I think a lot of people will benefit from that. Thank you for mm -hmm. sharing. Yeah, absolutely. So my last health and fitness question is, what's the number one piece of advice you give to someone just starting their weight loss journey? Um, just to keep trying, honestly. I've told so many clients this, that you're going to fail so many times like it's inevitable you're not no one who's reached an upper echelon of a high level of fitness amazing any aspect of life has ever just turned it on mm -hmm. and and just run with it i mean that was that would is what i would attribute my personal success to with my fitness and my business is just continuing to try no matter what just tell yes. yourself no matter what if i screw the pooch yesterday i'm just gonna try again today just get, literally get just right try back again. on yeah yeah i think the only way to truly fail is to give up for sure 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Until you stop trying. Yeah. So many clients will like be so down on themselves in a check in like, oh, I just ruined the week. And I'm like, OK, so just yeah. do better today. Exactly. <laughs> it's a new day. Learn from it and yeah. keep going. I love that. And so I'm going to switch over to life now, like more life related. So what's the best life advice you've ever received? 
the best life advice I've ever received. Don't make a, a long-term decision on a short-term emotion. That is phenomenal. Probably the best advice I've received because I made a short-term decision or excuse me, a long-term decision from a short-term emotion. Um, this person was a mentor of mine, my boss, but it was personal advice he gave me um, when I was going through kind of a hard time. And he was like, just don't make a long-term decision on a short-term emotion. And I've learned that multiple times, but yeah. I think that that's helped me pump the brakes sometimes on like reacting yeah. off of an emotion instead wow. of thinking about like, okay, what are the long-term implications of this? I'm going to let that one sink in a little bit. That's, <laughs> that's actually amazing. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my last question would be like, what fuels you? Like what drives you to continue going forward? That's a very tough question. Because I, I wouldn't say that there is a singular thing that fuels me to keep going forward. I guess fulfillment of purpose and trying to discover like what my purpose is. Like what is God leading me to do? Mm -hmm. That's probably been my most recent pursuit is figuring out like, okay, God keeps putting me into very similar situations. And I'm like, why am I doing that? Like, why am I back in this situation again? Why am I faced with the same type of challenge? I'm like, there must be a reason that I'm here. So mm -hmm. I think that it's, that's what pushes me to keep going is like, what is, that. what does God want me to do for yeah. me personally? And my keep, faith. keep going deeper and keep finding yeah. that, that true root, root reason why you're going to keep going. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for yeah. taking the time. Thank to, you uh, so much. It was nice to meet you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, in case you guys didn't know, this is the king of Austria. He is uh, basically the most well-known uh, fitness icon in Austria right now. So, my man, uh, I have five questions for you. Three of them will be uh, fitness, nutrition related. Two of them will be more like life related. So, let's dive into the good stuff here. So, of course, number one, what is the biggest misconception about fitness and nutrition that you'd like to debunk? Or like, what's the biggest thing people... Uh, misconceive going into their journeys most people think you need a lot of time yeah so i really think you don't need a lot lot of time because if you implement things into your life it can be so easy like rapidly easy yeah so results are coming like just flying by right mm -hmm. so the most people are like hey i don't have time for these things and things like this but it's like, if you implement it into your life and it brings you success with only like one to two hours a week, come on, man, one to two hours a week, really? Yeah. That's it? You don't have time for this? I agree. That's yeah. awesome, man. Thank you for sharing that. So my next question is, what's the biggest challenge you've personally faced on your own health and fitness journey and how did you overcome that? I think my biggest challenge was the fear of starting. Oh, wow. So basically, I was the fat kid and the thin teenager. Mm -hmm. And basically, you always have this picture in your head when you got like bullied or something in your childhood or any situation like this, right? And just like the fear to overcome it, to do like, I can be better, I can do this. It's just these little, these little stories in our own heads which hold us back, right? 100%. And if you get like a good coach like I did before because I couldn't overcome it, yeah, these people can help you overcome this. Man, I can really relate to that. That's that's very similar to my story. So thank you for sharing that. Sure, so my last question for health and fitness would be, what is the number one piece of advice you'd give someone just getting started on their weight loss journey? The number one piece of advice. Don't try to be perfect. Yes. Never fucking... Whatever you do, don't try to be perfect. The problem is, people sometimes don't start. Yep. So, it's like if you have two boats and one knows you should go to the north and the other one waits for the perfect coordinates, right? Yep. Then one just goes to the north and it can always course correct. Yep. And the other one is still waiting at like the land to drive off because they don't have the perfect way. So if you don't start, you're probably way, way, way less efficient than someone who is like not knowing shit for real, yep. but is just going and figuring it out along the way. So that's like the biggest thing I could tell someone, start and at the best way, hey man, get a coach. So yeah. you will not find any successful type of guy without a coach and that what I did and what I would recommend every time again. 
That is phenomenal advice, man. That is wonderful. So kind of staying on that topic of advice, we're going to go into more life advice, uh, that kind of realm. So my next question is, what is the best life advice you've ever received? I ever, that's a good fucking question, man. Thank you. The best life advice. The best life advice for me was, I make my own rules in my life. So most of the time, I don't know if, so I'm basically a workaholic, right? Yes. So if I work, I am yeah. happy, right? And the best life advice for me was, in your life, you doesn't need like work-life balance. You doesn't need like this time for that and the meditation things. It's like, do the shit that makes you happy. Yes. You don't need like balance because balance is every time 50-50, right? For me, it was like, you need harmony. So if it like, if it's for you, okay, to work 90% of the time and get 10% off, then that's the shit you should do, right? You yep. doesn't need 50-50. You need to do that things that helps you in your life. So I make my own rules. And if someone is saying like, you should do this, you should have balance, you should like take holidays. Motherfucker, I don't. <laughs> I yes. do what I want. If I want to work and it makes me happy, why the fuck you want to stop me? <laughs> it's my life, man. <laughs> yes, dude. I love that. That is so true. And I think uh, I think you could apply that to your fitness journey too for, for people just getting started. You of know? course, man. It, it, make it look how you want. If you want to have the foods you love, in include them. You know, you don't have to restrict. And so uh, that's amazing, man. Thank you for sharing. And uh, lastly, um, I love asking this question. So I want to know, like, what fuels you? What drives you? to continue going forward? What can like drives you to continue on this journey of this thing we call life? Dude, you have questions. You. <laughs> I love them. So for me personally, because everyone have like his own motives, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's really deep down inside me to get recognition. Okay. So most of the guys have like their real motives like i want recognition i want like a fit body to look good to attract women or anything like this right mm -hmm. and people say like no no you shouldn't have this and you should like do it for yourself and things and i honestly i know i sound like an asshole right now i disagree yeah. if it's your real your real motive to like get recognition of people and it drives you it brings you to that kind of thing you do something for yourself and you help people why don't take the energy so for me it was like i want to be someone i never was someone as a kid because i was fat people bullied me i never was someone in my life and now like in austria i mean you guys heard me on stage i was like one of the biggest guys here and i got recognized i was the man i wanted to be and that's what makes me happy and if someone is like no, you should not seek recognition or anything from el from someone else, just only yourself. I disagree. If that makes you happy, if that drives you, and like me with my fitness coaching business, I help people with it. So if this shit is driving me and I can help people along the way, why the fuck not use the energy, right? Mad, mad respect, brother. Uh, you are truly living up to that dream and uh, you're turning those dreams into reality. And uh, it's been amazing uh, to see your growth and like I remember seeing you in the past and then just yeah. seeing you on stage man of that's course, man. phenomenal I'm, I'm proud of you bro thank you thank you brother Absolutely. and our next guest is my great friend Lydia uh, I actually met Lydia in 2022 at the first coaching con and uh, we've been pretty much friends ever since and I've seen her at every event since so uh, that being said I'm excited to dive into these questions so I'm going to ask you three questions that are like fitness and health related and two that are a little more life advice related. So first question is, what is the biggest misconception about fitness or nutrition that you would like to debunk? I think um, this might be a little overwhelming or underwhelming is the fact that like there's not one diet for everyone or yes. a diet that fits all or can fix all issues. Um I agree with you. We're, we're <laughs> no, no, we're no. I love that. That's and uh, by the way, you're not the first person to say that. That is so okay. important. Yeah, because I think uh, everyone thinks like, oh, this is the best diet. This is the best diet. Oh, my mm -hmm. friend did this diet, so I need to do this diet. It's like no, like we're humans. We're all different. We're all individuals, and so what works for you 
is definitely not going to work for me. What mm-hmm. works for her is not going to work for me. It's like everyone's different. So I think you need to treat your nutrition that way. So that was a beautiful answer. I love well, that. Well, there's also like the food industry or like diet industry. Like there's so much, it's become like cults. Like if you're carnivore yes. or vegan, yes. there's like, if you're one or the other, you're. The keto cult's so aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> keto cult. Yeah. Um, and also like it becomes almost like political. And I think it can yeah. be too politicized absolutely yeah. i think it's the first time ever we've seen diets start to get politicized with like some of these documentaries going out on netflix not that to, are not very to name biased any. yeah <laughs> anyways um that being said what would you say is the biggest challenge um that you've had on your own fitness and or nutrition journey and how did you overcome that i think definitely like they're both different like with fitness um i grew up very skinny i was the i was the little girl that I think a lot of people assumed or yeah, kind of assumed that I had like an eating disorder growing up, but I was just, I was eating very lean meats. My family grew up uh, hunting elk. Um, so badass. Yeah, it was so badass. Now that I look back at it, it was amazing, but I was also just a little girl, uh, built little, and I was always told that I couldn't lift weights or I couldn't do CrossFit, that I was my soccer coach, shout out, um, always told me that I'd get injured, that I wouldn't be able to compete in sports, and then freshman year of college I stopped doing soccer I stopped running and I gained 30 pounds and a lot of it was muscle and that was thanks to working out and it's changed my life and then I also eat a lot more than I used to because I think we always have this idea that we us girls need to stay skinny and the only way to do that is I didn't starve myself I just didn't eat enough and then when I got into college I started eating more and I had the meal plan a shout to Colorado Mesa University and I ate a lot <laughs> there was some freshman 15 uh there but now i've got a roaring metabolism i strength train and i feel the best i've ever felt absolutely i think i think the uh muscle mommy movement is probably one of the most important things that's ever happened to this world mm-hmm. it's gonna it's gonna make you like healthy skinny <laughs> like, if that's the goal yeah healthy fit i love it and so my last fitness nutrition related question is what is the number one piece of advice you'd give to someone today that's just getting started on their weight loss journey? Don't, don't do everything at once. Don't, don't complicate it. Um, start with what's, uh, start with smart goals, something that's specific, okay. measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. There so it's rather than saying, oh, I'm going to be better this year sets set smart goals um yeah. it doesn't need to be let's run a marathon let's do power lifting competition like let's let's increase our steps let's focus on our protein like yeah. let's start simple um but smart and make it to where it's realistic like if you can't stay consistent with all these goals all year long or in the one month then why should we expect that we're going to be able to do them realistically for the rest of our lives 100 percent. i think uh having or knowing someone that's been there before, or even working with a coach, I think it's really important for that R of smart, which is that realistic side, because I feel like uh, just the reality that people think like, oh, I'm going to lose 30 pounds. And you're like, oh, like, great. Oh, you want to do it in 30 days? Are you kidding me? That's, you're going to die. Like, you can't do that. So, (laughs) um, absolutely. So I think uh, realistic is a really important one. And I think having other perspectives on the realistic side of things is extremely important. So don't be afraid to ask. So am I allowed to swear? I apologize. No, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Fuck. Yeah, you are. So going into the life advice portion of this, my next question is like, what is the most impactful or relevant piece of life advice you've ever received? That's a really good one. Um, I feel like something that's like always stuck with me is uh, something that I learned from my grandfather who's 93 and golfs three times a week. And so cool. He's insane. He's amazing. Um, he's been a big reason for why I do everything that I do, but also something that like I heard and learned in college is um, your body adapts to what you do. And if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Those are kind of the two that I like to use. Yeah. Um, my grandpa was the one that was always like, when I go to the store, I park like three blocks away. And so he's always walking and moving. Um, and I think it's just something that's really underrated and something that we all need to focus on is like, yeah, you might have been able to say that you could lift all the weight when you were in your 20s and now you just can't do it because like, oh, it was when you were in your 20s. Well, like, like, yeah, you stopped doing that. Yep. Um, so 
if you don't use it, you lose it, and your body adapts to what you do, vice versa. 93 and golfing three days a week, that is mm-hmm. a prime example mm-hmm. of you lose it, you use it or lose it. And yeah. uh, clearly, he's still going. That's freaking awesome. He that, has, that's so inspiring. He has a routine of exercises that he does every morning, and it's kept him going. My great-grandma lived to be 102, riding a bike until she was 100. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't a... It was a tricycle, big, big tricycle. So cool, but though. still, yeah, don't that's know many amazing. people that are doing that. Okay, and he uh, would come hunting with my family until he was ninety, up at like twelve thousand feet in elevation. That is elk so hunting. Cool. <laughs> that is so cool. All right, Lydia. So my last question: mm-hmm. What drives you, or inspires you, or continues to push you moving forward through this game we call life? Wow, that was very inspiring. Um, <laughs> I think there's been a lot of times, like I'm sure all of you, us coaches have um, had these moments of being like, why do we do what we do? And I think seeing it impact so many other people and seeing that our careers is something that's going to keep people healthier, living longer. We have, is it a third of our population is obese? Third is overweight. And I believe more than half is uh, obese. I yeah. think I, I, no, is it a third that's obese? No, it's half, half is obese three quarters is overweight i believe that's true what if it's maybe it's Google half it. of us is overweight a third is obese yeah a thir- maybe 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 it's one of those because like overweight comes first maybe and then obese is like obese yeah i, I know obese <laughs> obese is like a lower a lower percentage but i believe really? i mean okay yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah obese is because overweight is like slightly over over like your normal your, BMI. Right. Um, I mean, but I'm, I also don't really buy into the whole BMI thing because like right. technically I'm obese, mm-hmm. but that's just because I have an extra 20 pounds of muscle mass compared to the normal person that's a five, six human. So um, I agree with you on that though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So exactly. If you have like example for BMI being bullshit is if you not bullshit, but like not don't, don't trust it or don't don't depend on it. Yes. Um, if you have two twins that are both six foot, 220 pounds, um, but one is uh, fat mass is much larger than the other. Yep. Uh, you have one that's more active, but they both weigh the same. They're both the same height. They're going to say that they're both the same BMI, mm-hmm. but you put both of them on a treadmill. Um, we're going to have some different results there. Um, 100%. One could have a lot more lean muscle mass and then, yeah. Absolutely. That's fine. TED Talk. So what keeps driving you forward? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, did we get off track there? Yeah. I think we did a little bit. Okay. Um, what keeps driving me forward? It was your. It was the inspiration of your clients. Yes. Inspiration of my clients, essentially. Okay. You worded it's it way impact. better than it's I did. It's like the impact that you have on the people mm-hmm. in your network, your clients, the people that follow you and that are inspired by your own journey. Mm-hmm. The amount that. of... Uh, there's been times where I felt like giving up or being like, I don't know why I'm doing what I do. And the texts that I've gotten from my clients or calls or interactions I've had with them saying that I've changed their life is just why I keep doing what I'm doing. Absolutely. And well, Tyler also inspires me. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Lydia. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, unfortunately, it'd probably be the last coaching con I ever see you at because it is the last coaching con. And, uh, there is other events coming, so maybe I'll see you at the next one, but it was great to see you again, and uh, thanks for taking the time oh, yeah. to do this. Thank you, Tyler. Absolutely. So sorry for the interruption, but I also know these interviews are packed full of a ton of amazing information. So before we move forward, please take a moment to write down some of the big key takeaways you got from these first few interviews. And one thing I wanted to do is split this into two episodes because I wanted you to take time to actually think about some of the things and lessons that you learned from this episode. So if you can, before you leave, make sure you are subscribed to the channel so I can bring you more amazing content like this. And stay tuned for next week where I have four more amazing guests that are coming onto the podcast. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.